what's the possibility of my life if I allow a little bit of that light to come in through the crack? What's the possibility? You don't have to tell anybody that you're thinking that way. You don't have to tell anyone that you're shifting your perspective. You are only accountable to you first and foremost, and then to any responsibilities that you've lined up in your life in case you have kiddos and stuff. You you do have to take care of them. Hi, welcome to Intuition, Your Success Compass. I'm Vicki Baird. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, unexpectedly, all plans canceled. I was supposed to teach a class and everybody had a conflict. I think of this as the universe saying, here you go, Vic, go talk, which I would have done teaching the class anyway. But the gift in all of this is I get to talk to you because we may as well use the time in a way that I enjoy. And I just had a conversation with someone right before I got all the text saying, I can't make it. And she was saying that she didn't have things in her life and she wanted those things in her life. And why didn't she have those things in her life? And she's just in a space. And I said to her, respectfully, it is really difficult to have your joy, have your prosperity, have your talent, have your abundance when you're focused on the lack. And this wasn't a one-time thing. Like if this was someone who was just having a moment, no, I'm not going there. That's rude. I would have allowed the vent and then said, how can I help? Sometimes you just need to vent, right? Sometimes you just need to get it off your chest. But this has been a pattern and it's something that has been showing up in her life and therefore in mine when she has communications. Oh, look, I got a sparkle on my <laughs> my sweatshirt. For those listening, you can't tell. Look, my inner sparkle is showing. It's starting to speckle up. I'm going to leave it because it's a reminder to reflect light and be light and shine. So as we're talking, I said to her, all right, what is there in your life right now that is actually working, that you enjoy, that is bringing you a sense of zippity doo dop. And we had a really, she had a really hard time finding it. And I said, let's go small. What is it? What was great today? You know, did you have a dessert? Did you see somebody smile? Are you grateful that you're sucking oxygen? Because sometimes it does just have to come to that and you use it. And she did find a couple things. And then I said to her, okay. Now let's switch a little bit. And can I ask you if your judge is in charge right now? Is your inner critic ego, is your sabotaging voice, you know, is biatch, like I refer to mine as my biatch, is she talking right now? Like, is that what's going on in this very moment? Is that what's creating the doubt or the sadness or the doldrums or? however you want to phrase it. So we pause. She's aware of the, that voice in her head. And no, this isn't a client. It was someone I was just sharing time with. And I explained to her how that voice can get in the way. It can get in the middle of actually experiencing joy. And we have to pause and remind ourselves that there's another way to think, that there's another way to be. There is a wisdom or a sage voice that we all have within us. It's actually who we are. It's our very essence. It's the soul level who was brave enough to come here and take on this human form and merge intuition with wisdom and mindset and just to create a whole experience. And I said to her, it's, I know it's hard to look beyond what is right here. And when you're feeling that. So we did some steps, we did some PQ reps, rub your fingers together, feel all the ridges in here. 
Boy, I really need to change my watch band. It's kind of gross looking, isn't it? Hello, squirrel. Rub your fingers together. Take some deep breaths. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a, I don't feel like it, Vicky, it's hard to take deep breaths. It's hard to remember to do that. Rub your hands on your thighs, wiggle your toes, look at something beautiful. You just need 10 seconds to get that brain to come from the left brain to the right brain and to activate in a way that has you looking for more of the joy, more of the glitter, more of the uplifting experience, and not in a fake way. Like I said in a previous episode, we're not faking anything here. We're being honest. But in every situation in every life, we can find that sparkle. We can find that light. And it may be that you're breathing right now. That may be the gift. And that is enough to have your brain step in and start seeing other possibilities and seeing things that maybe weren't evident before. Our brain gets hijacked. It gets taken over by the poor me's. And I'm not talking depression here. I feel like I shouldn't have to say this at that, say that at this point, but I'm going to just to cover my, you know what? I'm not talking about clinical depression. I'm not talking about even uh, cyclical or even situational depression. I am talking about when you have a day or a moment or an hour or something like that. Thank you, Willow, for scratching while I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute, though. So when your brain gets hijacked like that, it is really difficult to be able to notice, even notice, to see the opportunities. What are your talents? Like, What is the joy that's already there? What is the beauty in this world? I mean, can you look at nature? Nature's amazing. Like, whatever I'm feeling like I don't matter. Or whatever I'm doing in the world isn't enough. And that would be my saboteurs hijacking me. Listen, they're going to do it until I croak. I have a brain. It's just part of the wiring. But being able to recognize it means that it, I don't go off for weeks on end. I might have three minutes, right? So I always look to nature. And I'm fortunate enough, dark right now, but I'm fortunate enough when I look out my window, there's so many trees and a pond and a yard and a wildflower garden that I planted right out front because we had to have our drainage system dug up and because the basement was uh, flooding and that wasn't a great day. And yet because of some of the wiring, I was able to be frustrated, be upset about it, but not also have it, you know, take over my entire life and make me miserable for months on end. So I decided to turn <laughs> the front yard, which didn't grow. The grass didn't grow so well anyway, because there's so many pine trees out there. And I threw wildflower seeds out there. And I'm like, I don't need this manicured lawn thing. I want it to be beautiful. And now when I look out my office window, I see all these beautiful flowers that are out there, the bees, the birds, everybody that are out there enjoying it. So in that moment when I might be feeling miserable and my head is being hijacked, I have a go-to. That's like another PQ rep. So I was asking her, can we do that? Are you okay with that? Because not everybody wants help. Sometimes people just want to complain. And then I take my exit, you know, unless you've hired me. <laughs> and then I'll hang in there and we'll shift. But for the most part, I am not going to participate in that because that does not serve you. That does not help anyone that I'm having a conversation with. Empathy, of course, of course. But sitting in your, with you, not going to happen. So the action here that is, is needed is to pause and to think about, okay, can I identify the voice that's going on in my head? Here's a quick reference. If you're feeling like, Ugh, you got a saboteur on board. You got a victim, you got a controller, you got hypervigilant. It doesn't matter really which one. You have the judge, the judge always kicks it off. <laughs> he like kicks off the fun. 
you have that going on. So as you recognize that, oh, I'm feeling ugh, and I'm feeling ugh about myself or about circumstances or about other people, the judge has become activated. We want to activate curiosity. We want to activate exploration and wonder and awe. We don't want to activate being a miserable SOB. So the first step is to pause and recognize, I don't feel so great. Something feels out of alignment here. Something feels yucky or pick any other word you want to use, but it just feels off. And then in doing that, you can learn to identify, is this a judge? Is this a saboteur? Is this hungry? Do I need a drink? What is my sleep level at? Did I move my body today? There, It's always a sabotaging behavior. Sometimes you've been sabotaged (laughs) because of poor habits or just a week that was crazy, right? So I invite you to notice how you feel when there's a lack on board. Because just like focusing on what's not in your life yet won't help you, that's living in lack. So will feeling that miserableness or feeling like there's no point. So recognizing this pauses the runaway train. If you don't recognize it, it can be so easy to dig into story and to be part of the poor me crowd. I have empathy, so much empathy that I had to learn how to have good boundaries. And when you have a lot of natural empathic abilities, everybody's empathic, but when you have higher wired empathic abilities, I feel like it's even more important for us to be able to identify what's pulling us out of alignment because then you can have authentic empathy. When we have empathy that goes too far and we get into the lack and the poor me and life sucks and oh my goodness, these political systems and all of that, we aren't helping ourselves and we're not serving community or our world. So being able to identify when you're out of any kind of sync with yourself will put you quicker in touch with that intuitive soul-based brain and mindset, okay? So be willing to identify it. Don't blame yourself if it's coming up. Please don't do that. That just creates a cycle that keeps going and it's not worth it. Your brain is going to do it anyway. If you know your brain's going to do it, it'll do it less and less the more you practice being in a positive mindset and in a place of discernment it'll do it less and less, but it's still going to happen. And the more you accept that, you'll be able to shift or convert (laughs) when it's trying to drag you off into the bushes. So there are some pretty sad things that happen when we get taken over by our lower energy thinking brain. It does not allow our talents to come to the surface. One of the things I love the most about coaching is asking someone, what do you enjoy doing? Like, what's something about you that I wouldn't know intuitively? And I have one client who makes these amazing journals that she repurposes paper and magazines and and just so many things that Like my brain would never think of something like that. (laughs) And it just amazes me. And she had already been doing this, but the more we I coached with her and the more she showed up to do the work, that woman does the work, the more she did that, the more this creative side showed up for her. More and more, like it she felt like she wanted to be in her creative room or craft room. She wanted to try other things. And she went back to some projects that she had started because all of us know what that's like. I am actually looking at my closet that is wide open, (laughs) that has my felting supplies 
and a mat I never used, but I bought with the best of intentions. Eh, it's not going to go bad. It'll be there. But as we coach and as we have her using her right brain more and that focused action comes from the right brain, the more we pointed out the abundance in her life that was already there, the more the desire to be creative and to have her talents just ooze out of her. And it's been so fun to get the texts and the emails to say, this is what I created today. Because her shift in focus from what was wrong to what I already have in my life is what's doing it. She is showing up every moment. That's a lot of pressure. She is showing up whenever she recognizes that there's a voice that's out of alignment with how she wants to be. See, we set the course by just going ahead just a smidge, not to the end of your lifetime and what the heck your legacy is going to be, although I believe in that. But to what would you and how would you like to feel in two months' time, in three months' time, when we're complete with our first contract? Because maybe she doesn't continue, and that's totally her choice. But I want to make sure that she gets to achieve that feeling of believing in herself and abundance and to not auto default to lack. Because your brain is going to do that. Remember, it's there to keep you alive. It is absolutely there to keep the systems going, but also to point out that over there was quicksand. Is there really as much quicksand as all the shows in the 70s and 80s led us to believe? I doubt that. But let me know if you know where it is. I'll avoid it. Is there a danger over there? You know, should I not go into that neighborhood? Should I not date the same person again? See, this is where listening to that voice will help. Because when we don't listen to what's going on in our brain, we avoid. And then we can't get the accurate, the accurate downloads and information so that we can make conscious choices for our lives. So I'm just so thrilled to see the progress that is happening for her in her life. And to get the emails, I'm so proud of me. And I, another client said she learned to like herself a little bit more. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Because little bit, little bit, little bit adds up. <laughs> we actually have a horse <laughs> at the sanctuary named Little Bit. And now every time I say that, I didn't realize how often I said it until I met him. And now I tell him every time I see him that he's a part of my everyday life because I say little bit, little bit, little bit all the time. But now I have this cute little face. Oh, here's the most amazing, amazing little chin. So, and he's come from a lax situation. He was headed, he was in the slaughter pens as most of the equines and mini donkeys, which I know are still mini donkeys. And mini ponies, mini horses, not mini ponies, mini horses, ponies, horses, ponies, mini horses and donkeys, mules that are at the place. Every one of them was in a lax situation at some point. They were either removed from an abuse situation, they were rescued from the slaughter pipeline, and yes, that still exists, or they were found to be have no home to go to. So they all came from a negative situation. And this is again where I look to nature and I look for resiliency because that plant I thought was not going to make it through. I didn't think my lavender plant was going to make it through the drain situation and it did better this year. There might be something to that. But then the, the resiliency of the animals too if you've ever had a rescue animal or something of that nature, we don't 100% know their background. Yeah, we can tap in intuitively, but we don't 100% know. And that can be an inspiration because there was a lack, but they seem to always look for the gift or the opportunity in the moment once you work through the fear, which is true and just takes time. So 
will this process for you? It will take time. There is no magic wand, but things can be magical. When you move from scarcity to abundance, you start seeing more of it. And again, you start leaning more into thriving and and focusing on the smallest moments of joy and turning a situation like tonight, if all of your participants in a group can't get together, you might have a saboteur that could come on and just start working their numbers. Say, see, Vicky, it's not that important to them. They didn't show up because you don't matter. You're a terrible group leader. I know that's not true. But there's a voice that could come up and say that. And within seconds, I was like, okay, here's an opportunity to get on and, and talk to the listeners of this podcast because I always feels to me like we're spending time together, even though it's a bit posthumous after I've recorded it. So I'd like to encourage you to listen to yourself, become aware of, is there a saboteur coming in and stealing your joy or smushing a talent of yours? Is there one that is saying, well, there's no point in you even trying that because you won't be good at it. Is there any one that's saying, you never finish anything, so don't even bother? Any of these voices, if they're there, I'd like you to look at them and say, thank you for showing up and for letting me know that that voice is still in my head. And I'm going to choose in this moment to not listen to you. I'm going to do my reps. I'm going to build the resiliency of my right brain. And then, and then I am going to take one small step towards enacting whatever it is that, this hair is driving me crazy today, um, whatever it is that might bring me joy. And it could be researching something. It might be looking up a new technique for something you already do. It may be seeking out volunteer opportunities in your area. It could be you found out that your author, an author that you like just dropped a new book that happened to me this morning, right on Audible. Thank you for those birthday Audible credits. I saved them. I saved them all. And that's not a lack energy. I don't save them because I'm fearful they'll go away and I'll never have them. I save them because I only use them for fiction books. I never used to listen to audible fiction. And it was something, a gift I gave myself this year for when I'm walking with Miss Slowpoke over here. And there's different ways of looking at things. There's a true joy when I get to download a book and I'm so excited to listen to the next chapter and to find out what happened to the characters. So it could be seen as that's a lack thing of I'm saving all my credits, but it's actually something that I know sits there and gives me great joy. So when a book comes along that somebody else recommends, for instance, I feel like, ooh, it's there, like my little book savings account. And that's an example that I didn't intend to use, but here we go, uh, of where abundance can be in our life and can, we can see it as that lit up and expansive energy to see how much we can possibly love out of being human. It does take some practice. It's like anything else I've talked about on here. It takes being willing to admit that you're not happy. And that's hard. Sometimes that's really hard to admit that your life is lacking in some way. You could have, you know, on paper, as they say, the most amazing life going on and still not feel, feel lit up. And that is sad to me because it doesn't take much once you get the brain online 
to see all of the things that are amazing in our world, because there really is a lot that's there that is breathtaking. And yet, how will you see it if your filter of which you look at the world is through lack and through negativity and through, well, I don't have that. Other, that's for other people. That's not for me. And with a little bit of empathy for yourself for the fact that you're feeling that way, but then curiosity, and then what's the possibility? Like, what's the possibility of my life if I allow a little bit of that light to come in through the crack? What's the possibility? You don't have to tell anybody that you're thinking that way. You don't have to tell anyone that you're shifting your perspective. You are only accountable to you first and foremost, and then to any responsibilities that you've lined up in your life in case you have kiddos and stuff. You, you do have to take care of them. So what it does when we start to shift our focus and we're picking up on the supportive and we're wiring that intuitive brain, which sits on the right-hand side, just above your eyeball, is it starts to enhance your intuition. It sends it through the roof. The more I light up my right brain, the more I am amazed that I pick up on intuitively. Stuff I don't necessarily need to pick up on, but it's there. And the more I feel universally, like I feel more life force out there, the more my energy is focused in seeing what is beautiful in this world. And interestingly, it's allowed more of a realistic view for me. I'm not over here sugarcoating things and I'm even more willing to see those that don't have my best interests at heart, that don't have the world's best interests at heart, that are jerks, sociopathic. Yes, that's judgmental. I'm okay with that because it helps me to have the healthy boundaries to say, oh yeah, that's right. That is not a frequency that I meet up with, whether you're related to me or not. It's not happening. So. When you activate your sage mind or your soul mind, that right brain, there's less work that both sides of your brain is doing. And then there's more of a building of the center bridge of the corpus callosum in the middle that allow bing, 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 bing. Because remember that left brain is awesome for some stuff. It's just a terrible storyteller. (laughs) And we'll continue to tell the story of lack. And if you'd like to be in abundance in your life, an abundance of joy will also mean you have less stress. And when you quiet the saboteurs, much like I've talked about before, there's more room for developing relationships, for creativity, for exploration, meaning travel, or in your own backyard, just go out and see what's out there, the trails, take a cooking class. I learned how to make pierogies, gluten-free pierogies. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And it was full, so fun to show up with like-minded people. I don't like potato inside a pasta. I don't. But the class was fun. And hey, it's the same thing as a dumpling. And I really love dumplings. So that type of exploration where even a year and a half ago, the saboteur in my brain would have said, oh, you can't show up there. You don't know how to do it perfectly. Don't bother showing up. Yeah, that's how my brain talk, used to talk to me. So what is one thing that you are grateful for in this moment as you're listening to this podcast? You're already doing it. So take a breath. What is one thing that you're grateful for today? Okay. Once you have that, how could you enhance that? How could you fluff it up a little bit? How could you create more abundance in that area or let it be to inspire you in in other areas? You know, so 
if you are grateful for the loving relationship that you're in, how could that inspire you to be more loving towards yourself? Yeah, you thought I was going to say everybody else, didn't I? Didn't you? Didn't I? One of us doesn't know who we're talking to. <laughs> you thought I was going to say to be more loving to someone else, go give it out somewhere else. I was not. It is incredibly impossible, I'm willing to say, to have abundance, to see abundance, to really love the abundance that's in your life if you're not including yourself in the picture. So I hope you're grateful for yourself because that is where most manifestation comes from is how we feel, not how you think. Have you been listening? This thing will do a number on you. Your old cabeza, do a number on you. So tuning into how you feel about things, what do you feel grateful for? What do you feel could be better? Use it for both sides. Shifting the focus uncovers things that you didn't even know you were, that, that were there. I was making just simple rice and beans yesterday and thought, I really like cooking. Anyone who knows me would not have expected those words to come out of my mouth a couple of years ago. I think it's been evident that I've been having more fun with it. But it just dropped in that I really like cooking and I really like experimenting. And my hyperachiever self ooh, would not have done that even three months ago. It was follow a recipe, don't deviate. And now I'm like, hmm, don't have that ingredient. What's something similar? Let me try that. This sounds good. Let me mix that with that. And nah, I don't like the way they did that. I made an apple dessert the other day and it didn't have enough apple in it. Like, why are we skimping on the apples? No lack where apple comes into our desserts. You must always have apples overflowing. So when I felt that, when I felt that I really like cooking, there's a sensation that goes through your whole body when you're in alignment. And it's a grounded feeling. It's not this flighty, out of your head kind of feeling. It's a wow, wow, life is amazing. And in this moment, I'm only thinking about rice and beans and life is amazing. I didn't need to post it anywhere. I didn't need to tell anybody about it, although I'm telling you about it. So I'm happy to share. <laughs> but it was just such a testament to what a balanced, happy, healthy, now quiet, wasn't always quiet, brain can be. People will, I've had people say to me, wow, considering how much in, intuitive stuff and download you get, your head must be so loud. Mm -mm. There are times where I can go 30 seconds without a thought, and then my, I, there's got to be some kind of auto system that kicks in. And it's like, you haven't had a thought in 30 seconds. Could you maybe think something? But even then, it's like, wow, I haven't had a thought in 30 seconds. A few years ago, that would not have been the case with me. It would have looked calm on the outside, but the inside would have been like chipmunks running on a moving sidewalk. So if you can access curiosity of what is happening here? Why do I keep talking to myself that way? You may recognize that the voice is not yours. Likely, you will recognize that the voice is not yours. And perhaps there was another person in your life that taught you to lack. Well, my friend, you are here doing your soul's journey. It is really up to you to decide that that's not how you live anymore that you don't want to live that way. You don't have to listen to them. You don't have to think that they're an authority on you. You could even do a statement that says, I forgive myself for believing that others knew me better or know me, if you want to make it current term, better than I know myself. And then rise to the challenge. What can I learn here? Is there an opportunity that this is presenting to me? Could I shift this situation? and actually enjoy what's going on here. Because sometimes having a work meeting where that you were dreading, if you go into it with, 
could I actually enjoy this? That could be amazing. So it's possible. It just takes a little bit of effort and it's worth it. It's worth it. When you're tuning out, quieting, tuning out and quieting the saboteur noise, your inner wisdom sometimes feels like it has a bullhorn. And, but it will bring you that information. And over 23 years, I've been working with people and helping them to develop their intuition. And it's only when I decided to really come clean about my love and interest in our neurological and neuropathway work that I've seen people really tap into their intuitive sense well. It always used to confuse me about how do I teach someone else how they receive messages? Now I can see it and I can absolutely affirm like which Claire is your, your, your highest sense. But in full transparency, it's been incredibly difficult for me to teach intuition. And that's part of the reason I don't do it as a direct thing, like tap into your guys, tap into your angels and all of that is because it was confusing to me. I was looking at helping someone, helping you develop your intuition, but I was also holding a responsibility for you to develop your intuition. So in some way, I was in lack as I was holding all of it. And then once I decided I don't want to be anymore, I want to be fully transparent that this brings me joy to talk about the brain coming together with your spirit, which lives throughout you. It's not just your gut. It's in your heart. It's in your third eye. It's above you. It's around us. And when I decided that that's going to be my message, my joy, that's my abundance. That's what I want people to know. All of a sudden, everything started popping even more. And that's what I want for you because it's a hell of a lot less work, my friends. It's so much less work to have your intuitive brain and your cognitive brain working as friends. But you must, must put some effort into whatever is getting in your way, in your stinking thinking, in your sabotaging behaviors, in stuff that was wired there before you even knew you had a brain. Your, it's not your fault. It is your responsibility to shift it. If you want to live a life that feels fun and joyful and abundant. so. Joy is a good guidepost, right? Like it's a good, kind of like the bumpers in bowling, right? Like if you're not feeling some kind of joy in your life, that should be the indication to get back in there. Something, something's not right. We are by very design here as souls to learn how to experience the joy of our soul in our human self. That's your mission. That's your mission to learn how to experience joy at the level that our soul does in physical self. It's so possible. It's real. It's here and still be a contributing member of society. By embracing mental fitness and intuition, by embracing your sage mind and your intuitive space, you fully step into your brilliance. and. That is a light that I very much want to see. I want to see your brilliance. I always see people's brilliance before they do, but there's nothing in coaching that I love more than someone saying, I really like, and I'm learning to love myself. It's just so good. So I am going to invite you to consider and then act upon paying attention to the voices that are showing up. Pay attention to the lack messages. Look at them kindly. Do not be mean to your voice because it'll just keep the process going. Look at it kindly and say, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for letting me know that you're still living in there. And kind of like the Mucinex guys, you want to evict them? (laughs) 
So if you can every day give yourself a focus of that, it will exponentially change how you experience the world. And if you would like to expand upon that, please consider attending and and being part of one of my mindset breakthrough, because this is the stuff that we cover, and yet in a much more detailed, personal way with all of the tools to get you there in a short amount of time in the six, seven weeks that we're together. But then that sets the footprint for the rest of your life, because this isn't a learn it and forget it kind of thing. This is a learn it and embody it and then embrace it and then freaking rock your life kind of thing. So thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and for even considering that you would like to live in a abundance-based thinking or joyful, purposeful, talent-driven. I promise you have them. I am so grateful, so grateful for every listen and everybody who shares this and leaves a review. It really does fill my life (laughs) with a great amount of abundance. This has been a heart project for me for well over 300 episodes. And it's the way that I feel I can bring abundance to the world. And I am infinitely grateful that you show up and that you are a part of my circle. Thank you very much. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to vickybaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app. That will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.